Well, today on Emotional Savvy, we're going to be talking about that connection, the connection between your brain and your health and your well-being and what you can do. And in particular, when you have been in a long-term, anxious, maybe difficult relationship, how that relates to your levels of physical health, what can be going on. Sometimes we find that that relates to autoimmune diseases. So I'm going to be talking today with my guest, Dr. Brindu Savanta, and we are going to explore this topic. So stay tuned. Welcome to Emotional Savvy, the Relationship Help Show. I'm Dr. Roberta Shaler. If you're ready to increase your confidence in conversations and conflict, deepen your self-awareness, expand your connectedness, and enrich your relationship with yourself and other humans you care about, and even those you wish you didn't, you're in the right place. Enjoy today's episode. So welcome back. Today we are talking about health. And of course, we're always talking about health because relationships need to be healthy. But how does that relate to our body? How does it relate to our wellness and our sense of well-being? So my guest today is Dr. Brindu Savanta. Welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me, the Dr. Schaller. It's a pleasure to, to be your guest. Uh, I want to thank you very much for uh, all your work that you're doing. Everybody's aware that is the cold and flu season and to protect themselves for cold and flu, but nobody talks about toxic relationship and that can have more impact on your health than any cold and flu uh, well, virus, it, right? It certainly does. And for those of you who are joining us, if you'd like to tell your friends to join us, if this all of a sudden became real, make sure that uh -huh. you invite them or send them a link so they can listen to this conversation as well. And mm -hmm. you are, one of the things that you are in, in, you're talking about is that that relationship, and we wanted to explore that very integral relationship between what we're feeling, what we're thinking, and how our body is responding. So when we have prolonged anxiety, for instance, maybe we're in a toxic relationship. Maybe we were raised by toxic parents. Maybe we have had a situation of anxiety for all of our life because we've been insecure attachments. Perhaps we didn't know where we were going to be loved or cherished or even taken care of. And then we went on and we created relationships out of need and the hope mm -hmm. that we would actually be loved. And then we continue on with that. So just before we have our conversation, I want to tell you a little bit and read from Dr. Vanta's bio. She has spent the last two decades of her life either studying, practicing, researching, or teaching medicine in one form or another, both allopathic, which is the conventional medicine, or alternative uh, therapies and directions. She received her MD degree from the University of Medicine in Romania and her homeopathic doctor diploma from my homeland, Canada, in 2006. Dr. Vanta's work is focused on nutrition and natural medicine, so we've got lots of questions about that. Currently, she's a medical researcher who makes use of the latest scientific studies on brain health and provides one-on-one -on -one consultations to people around the world. So we've got an expert here to ask really big, deep, important questions. So what do you think is the number one likelihood that a person is going to notice in their bodies? What kind of dis-ease are they going to notice if they've been in a prolonged, difficult relationship? Well, that's a very good question because 
talking about we're going to focus now on autoimmune diseases right and the relation between stress and autoimmune diseases and before you have all the markers and before your doctor is going to say you have this autoimmune disease there is a form called preclinical autoimmunity so this develops earlier before you get the diagnosis and you have sometimes non-specific symptoms that you ignore like for example brain fog and fatigue you have all kind of um, uh, new spots, let's say, of eczema that you've never had. You had a lot of digestive problems from bloating to simply feeling that you cannot digest properly the food. So digestive issues, uh, uh, skin, all kind of skin rashes, brain fog, and the feeling and a lot of fatigue. So these are the common symptoms that um, in in um, research in this world of in research medicine uh, this is called leaky gut when the intestinal permeability is increased and this is the the one step right before the autoimmune disease develops yeah so, i think that's important let's just take that apart a little bit because people are listening and they're thinking all right you mentioned uh, skin conditions autoimmune disease brain fog uh, food fatigue. sensitivities, yeah. <laughs> food yes. sensitivities, all these things. Now, I wonder how many people listening have actually thought, is it my relationship or my relationship in the past that may have set me up to be having these current conditions or to have these conditions become chronic? And that's what we're exploring today. So just mm -hmm. take a minute, everybody, and ask yourself, what is my level of stress right now? And what is it usually? Because we're going to relate that to how your body is functioning, what your brain is telling your body and what your body's telling your brain. And these are important things because you might think, oh, I shouldn't feel like this. What's wrong with me? Why am I That's not a able... very good question. <laughs> yeah. That's a very good question when you ask what's wrong with me. It's your body telling you that something is going on and to pay attention to it. You're right. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I've, I've had clients and I have clients all around the world as you do. And they'll say, but I can't seem to cope. Why am I sick all the time? As though it's their fault they're sick. And then they think that if only it wasn't their fault that they're sick, then the relationship would work. But in fact, when we get into it and say, it's just a minute, way. it's the other way around. Your relationship yes. is likely contributing to what is going sideways in your body. So tell Absolutely. us a little bit about the, how the brain works and how that message gets to the body. That's a very good question. So it's interesting because research study now is confirming what ancient forms of medicine like ayurveda and traditional chinese medicine knew for thousands of years that the mind and the body are very much connected so we have this relatively new field called psychoneuroimmunology that connects the mind with the nervous system with the hormones and with the immune system so emotions chronic especially chronic stress what happens is it's triggering inflammation in the body. So the body is releasing more inflammatory molecules called cytokines, and then they trigger an autoimmune response. So this would be the short. So this connection between mind and body is, is a, a, a proof that emotions lead to physical problems. And then this would be one way to explain the connection. And another one, this is even more exciting, is how uh, chronic stress and toxic relationship affect our gut microbiome. And the research that had been done in the last, uh, we didn't really know about gut microbiome since 1990s. And what we know now is that we have a lot of microbial uh, cells in our body and this gut flora is actually controlling our behavior our personality our mood our immune system the way we digest foods like without without this friendly bacteria in, in our gut we 
would not be able to digest foods or to create vitamins like B and uh, vitamin K. So it plays essential roles in our health. And interestingly, the starting point of autoimmune diseases, it seems to to start actually in the gut. It's very much related to an uh, imbalanced um, gut microbiome. So it goes like this, you have an imbalanced uh, gut microbiome and this leads to the leaky gut that I, I mentioned before and then autoimmune disease. Okay, so let's not get too far ahead of ourselves because this is maybe a moment when people are sitting up and saying, oh my, those connections are not things I've looked at in depth and I need to. So let's just step back and talk about inflammation. Because if yes. we have a picture in our minds of inflammation, we immediately think of fire, we think of flare-ups, we think of something too hot, we, we think of uh, not wanting it, you know, that is mm -hmm. not a good thing. We think of our skin turning red or a rash showing up or something Pain. happening. Yes. And then we think about inflamed emotions. Like what happens if you're angry all the time? Or what happens if you're angry inside and resentful, but you don't speak up? These are kinds of inflammation as well. And then we begin to see the connectivity, right? Yes, the physical, physical the symptoms match mental, mental feelings. And you're going to see, for example, type A personality that is very can be very impulsive and explosive is actually linked with heart diseases mm -hmm. and with so there is this connection for example muscle rigidity that is seen in uh, parkinson disease also matches a certain um inflexibility of emotional level yes so they do match they do match the, I, I always say that the physical symptoms match your 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 emotions, the way you think. Yes. Yes. And, you know, we may not be talking about current emotions. That's another thing you need to be thinking about. You may mm -hmm. have had a very, very difficult childhood, maybe an abusive childhood. Maybe you were neglected as a child. Maybe your needs were not met and things got put in, in order. They started to operate in your body. And yes. then maybe you don't get what you really need in your life as an adult. This process continues, doesn't it? Yes. Yes, absolutely. And there are studies showing that, uh, for example, people who experience chronic stress are more likely to develop autoimmune diseases compared with those who do not have chronic stress. You know, and an another, study, piece, another piece there just to interject, because you yes. you've got so much information, I just want to put it into really digestible bite, is that, okay. is that there is also a study that when you have chronic stress and anxiety, it also leads in Gabor Mate's studies to mm -hmm. the nine times the likelihood of creating breast cancer. Yes. So when we start to look at a statistics like that, if you have been in a chronic situation of stress and anxiety and concern, and you are living under that, it ups your body's chances of saying, my cells are going to go in a different direction here. They need to. And so mm -hmm. then we have to use services such as yours in order to come back and say, oh, just a minute, how do I get those all to live nicely together and start enjoying life again? <laughs> First of all, I recommend psychotherapy and seeing a psychologist to deal with emotional issues. I deal more with the nutrition part, right? So I tell you something because I was looking Everybody talks about business and what's the right mind, uh, mindset to, to have a successful business. And I look at the specific mindset of people who are able to overcome diseases. Okay, so, and I noticed that they all follow four steps. So, and I'm I was talking about multiple sclerosis, which is potentially um, uh, an autoimmune disease that has, uh, can be quite debilitating. 
and first of all they become they started to have symptoms and became disabled so some in some cases uh, straight paralysis step number two they took responsibility of their health so they made the decision that the health is in their health in in their hands so they moved from a passive role to taking an active role in their health and this made this change in the mindset made a huge change this led to their recovery basically unexpectedly uh, positive uh, outcomes okay so this is very important because everybody talks about mindset in business but there is a, a specific mindset for those who want to have, overcome diseases and I think relationship too right mm -hmm. if you are in a toxic relationship you need to make some changes in the way you think and the way you behave if you want to experience different outcomes absolutely true I mean I've been working and you help field. them with this right yes my that's what I do uh, I used to own a holistic health and yoga retreat center on Vancouver Island and it was mm -hmm. uh, very much in the beginning of people understanding that alternative therapies were important I was on my way to medical school when I made a shift and got a doctorate in psychology so I'm very interested in these things and always have been interested mm -hmm. So these connections that w you are talking about and I am talking about are really worth everyone's moments to sit down and say, what's going on in my body that is telling me it's not quite happy? And what could be going on in my life that is telling the body that, hey, you better watch out here? Because if we don't start to see those connections, we don't take time, what will happen mm -hmm. is that those symptoms will build and build and build and the body will get your attention. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, it's your body telling you, hey, take care of me. Yes. These are, these are symptoms. Yes. That's I, why we get symptoms. I remember speaking on this in the same program as Louise Hay years, years, years ago. And you know her wonderful book with all the metaphors in it about what these possibilities are that you might look mm -hmm. at if you have certain symptoms and I said to her afterwards we were having a drink and sh she was talking about her work and all and it was phenomenal and I was really appreciating it because at that time she was particularly involved in the uh, AIDS and and helping out with people understanding what was really going on metaphysically mm -hmm. <laughs> and I said to her you know there's only one problem when I give your book out I have to rip out the first three pages <laughs> why she said exactly that she said why I said because it does no patient good to read immediately that they created it and it's their fault mm -hmm. I said the metaphors are great but when somebody is in a heightened sense of fear about their health, they don't want to take on blame. This is not helpful. What we want to do is engage them in the idea exactly. that, okay, we've got this going on. How can we now move back to health, right? Exactly. So bring awareness first and then take responsibility. So I'm here. What can I do to fix the problem? Absolutely, yes. So first, first you need awareness and um, talking about my, my um, um, dietary recommendation and supplements, I focused a lot on brain health and also on the gut uh, microbiome because those friendly bacteria have to be happy if you want to be happy. And actually uh, um, the research with probiotics can show that probiotics can help relieve depression and anxiety. So, I'm going to say a few words about what these little bugs in the gut love. They, la they love three P's. P, one P is probiotic, the second P is prebiotic, these are fibers, fiber-like uh, substances that feed the probiotics. And number three would be polyphenols, so plant chemicals, uh, chemicals found in, in plants and fruits. So if you eat a lot of uh, fresh uh, vegetables and some fruits, 
uh, you're gonna have some fermented foods like uh, kefir and uh, uh, let's say sauerkraut and you have some uh, prebiotics in your diet your gut microbiome you can improve your gut microbiome and then you can uh, you will be able to deal better with a the toxic relationship <laughs> and uh, yes yes because the mind and the body are connected and then for brain again you you need supplements like vitamin d uh, omega uh, 3 especially the dha omega 3 fatty acids um, you need uh, b vitamins you need c and adaptogens are really great ashwagandha the indian herb ashwagandha it's it's awesome uh, if not ashwagandha rhodiola so they're plenty of supplements that can help improve they help you cope with stress this is what adaptogens are doing mm -hmm. so even if you have a bad relationship you are able to respond better to it yes well you're certainly speaking my language i used to grow ashwagandha mm -hmm. at the retreat center because I love it. <laughs> it was so um it was something that i was doing i would make capsules for people so that i would bring in Arjuna and all kinds of things because I studied Ayurvedic medicine for a long time and I would make combinations of capsules for people and grow many of the herbs. Now I don't do that mm -hmm. kind of thing anymore, but <laughs> that's what I did. But do you use years. it or, or Brahmi? Brahmi, Bakopa, Neem, again, it's phenomenal. Trifala, Amla, like oh, all yes. these Ayurvedic herbs are amazing for both gut and the brain. Right. So I totally, I recommend them a lot. Well, I think that these these are certainly things that that everybody needs to to know. I mean, everybody can enjoy shav and prash on their their breakfast. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. there are things that you can do. But of course, I just said something that you probably know nothing about if you're listening to this for the first time. And mm -hmm. this is an amla fruit that is made into kind of a jelly that you can put on your toast, for instance, or whatever whatever it is you enjoy, and Yes. So let's, um, so many recommendations, so many things to say. So I make water kefir and I make sure that I always have that in my fridge. But here in California, well, very hip, current and trendy, you can go out and have kombucha and any flavor on tap at any time. Yes, so we, things, we have here too. things that, that you can do for yourself that are helpful are also helpful to encourage and revigorate and inform your body so that you can find the strength to look at your relationship and stop the cycle. You know, whether you start supplementing and then get some help to work on your relationship, you get help Absolutely. to work on the relationship and start supplementing. These things can be extremely useful and readily available. I think that's absolutely. so important, don't you, Brenda? Yes, 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 absolutely. Like fermented uh, vegetables, you can make your own. You don't have to buy expensive probiotics. Kombucha, no. you can make it at home, absolutely. Yeah, you can yes. make kimchi, you can make sauerkraut, you can make things yes. that are very readily available. And uh, everybody can go to the store and get an organic cabbage. It's not hard. <laughs> All right, so let's um, let's use our time to give a little more breadth to this conversation because I think people are going to be really engaging and saying, "Okay, I had no idea with such a direct correlation between what's going Straight. on in my gut <laughs> and yes. what's going on in my relationships and life." So, tell us. You know, from that connection with anxiety, can you tell us what the likely steps might be as the body recognizes chronic anxiety? What changes start to occur? If someone's just entered into a relationship or is just realizing they're in a toxic relationship with those folks that I call hijackles. Um, and I, yes, <laughs> right. I, I came a few of them. And I can tell you from my experience, you feel something is wrong, your gut feeling, because we have a second brain in our gut. Your gut is telling you from the beginning, if you listen to it, that something is going wrong there. So my advice to your listener is to really get in touch to your body. It's great to notice any new symptoms and also relationships. And I, I'll be honest with you, uh, toxic people usually don't like me, but <laughs> I, I came across two of them and they were short, short 
very short-lived relationship and one actually ghosted me. <laughs> uh, but the they thing is, they do because they have to grow up, right? This is not, uh, this is a very childlike behavior. But the thing is, you, I, I didn't listen to my gut when I got into those relationships. Mm -hmm. And the reason why they don't like me too much, I think, is because I'm very upfront and very straightforward. And they don't like direct communication, do they? No, and I tell people all the time, don't poke a hijackle because only you get hurt. So they mm -hmm. don't like to hear what's wrong with them. They don't like to hear that they are the author of any pain that you might have. They don't like you to question them or their motives or their way of being. <laughs> they are yes. wanting to be at the top of the pile and always needing to be right because these are people, oh, yeah. and it's not anybody's responsibility to take care of this, but these are people mm -hmm who are petrified of shame in their lives. So they're very insecure, right? They're very insecure, but they're coming across as very secure and superior. They're very mm -hmm. insecurely attached if we look at, at attachment theory. But they're also people who are absolutely petrified and fragile about anyone suggesting there is even the tiniest thing amiss with them. They, they will not have it. They, they've got to put up the walls immediately. No, it has to be yes. your fault. And that's one of the ways that you can tell when you're with a hijackal is everything will turn out to be your fault after Absolutely. the initial love bombing stage. Nothing will ever be their fault. They won't take responsibility for getting fired. They won't be taking responsibility for mismanaging their money. Everything is someone else's fault. But do you think they're projecting, they use projection as a self-defense mechanism and they complain about other people when it's actually their own weakness? Do of course, that's that, a major feature. That's underlying? Yeah. Is that? Okay. Yeah, no, I, I'm feature. not an expert, you know. I, I was wondering because I, I've seen this. So when they start to complain or to become abusive, I feel that is their own problem projected onto others. It's so exactly the best right. Thing to do don't take it personally and and talk get go and get help don't keep inside if you if you're in a toxic relationship because the more you keep inside the more you're going to things are going to get worse because you will uh, probably subconsciously you are going to exaggerate that thing and it's going to get worse and worse and worse in your head unless you go talk to a friend talk to a psychologist like you right and get it out from your system. Let it go. Mm -hmm. I don't practice as a psychologist anymore. Uh, nope. And that's because I have clients all over the world and I can't be a psychologist in every country, state, oh, province, a license, right? This, yeah, the, the, same, <laughs> um, the same as me, yeah. But it is, it is so true. You know, if you say, okay, something's not sitting well with me. Look at that expression that we have in life. It's not sitting well with me. My body's uncomfortable. Something's on pain. alert. Pain, neck pain, slow back pain, headaches. Yes. Mm -hmm. Fatigue, um, yes. listlessness, not wanting to engage, not being interested. When your body starts to give you messages like that and other people are saying, what's wrong with you? <laughs> um, your close friends are saying, you don't seem to be yourself. What's going on? These are mm -hmm. wonderful moments to be grateful that someone yes. else is seeing you well and asking mm -hmm. a question to reflect back to you to look at your sense of well-being. And yes. that's, that's a gift people give you. But if you have been downtrodden and put down, worn down and torn down by a hijack call, you get defensive after a while, like, oh, no, it's not always my fault. It's not always complaining. What do you mean you're talking to me like that? And then after that, you become a doormat. You just give yeah. up, right? And setting clear boundaries, I think it's huge for toxic, uh, for toxic people because they aren't good. If you, if you set up clear boundaries... And you say it nicely, but firm, I think it helps a lot. Oh, it does. And you know, my guest today is Dr. Brindusa Vanta. And you want to go to yes. her website, drvanta.com. Dr. D-R, 
vanta.com so you can learn more. And she has a free gift for you. When you get to that website, you can take her brain health test. <laughs> that could yes. be very useful to you to get some results there and see, whoa, if that's going sideways, how does that relate to the conversation you're hearing us have right now? So very important, drvanta.com, D-R-V-A-N-T-A.com. And of course, you can always find me at transformingrelationship.com. So let's just talk a little moment now about what somebody could do from a physical point of view if they were feeling depressed. What would be the first steps for them if they're really worn down and torn down and they don't feel that they can move forward and they can't see a clear path? What could they do on the physical level? Uh, well, first of all, taking care of the diet. Because if you look at the diet, you get the nutrients that you need, the raw material that your body is going to convert into dopamine and serotonin. So you need clear foods, anti-inflammatory. You don't want fast food. You want um, lots of fresh fruits and veggies and meats. That Because, for example, you need tryptophan. Tryptophan is going to convert into serotonin. That is the feel-good chemical that... Is, mm -hmm. is usually deficient in depression. So you need good foods, you need good supplements, like ashwagandha It's great because it covers different neural uh, chemicals in the brain. Um, you need to exercise. I personally, I don't see anything else that works better than exercise. When you go and do have even a short, you can have a seven minute short um, um, high intensity interval training, you are a different person after that because it's changing your brain chemistry. And you are releasing several feel good chemicals, not just endorphins and dopamine and serotonin. You have like about seven or eight feel good chemicals that are released when you, when you uh, work out. Sleep is very important. Sleep is, is basically antidepressant because during sleep, your brain cells are repairing and uh, they regenerate during sleep. Uh, meditation, mindfulness meditation, I just review. I'm sure you love that one too. <laughs> if, you, if you like Ayurveda, you like meditation. So I just reviewed the benefits of mindfulness meditation for anxiety and depression. And even short even like I think it was five to seven minutes of meditation, so a short period of time can have a huge impact on depression and anxiety and, and, and stress, like chronic stress. And aren't you so, all happy to hear that she's just said two things that can each happen in a seven-minute interval? Now, we're not talking a long time. That's 15 minutes out of your day that will make a significant difference. Yes. And yes. you're worth it. You're worth 15 minutes a day, right, everybody? <laughs> yes, you are. You deserve to give yourself Absolutely. that time. It's your gift. It's a gift to yourself. It's a form of self-care. And talking about autoimmune diseases, I think I mentioned to you, I think we need more self-love in our life. Because if we love ourselves enough, we are not going to turn the immune system against our bodies, our own selves. And I'm not talking about self-love in a selfish way or anything like that. I'm talking about deep self-care and really take care of yourself. And exercise for me, it's a form of, or, or eating clean food or meditation. Is this our form? I, I do take care of, of myself. And I know, I, know, I know my brain loves that. So, Yes, if you were in my kitchen, you would see and open my fridge or my cupboards, you would see that I agree 100% with Dr. Vanta um, because I've been a, a yoga teacher since I was very young in the Shivananda tradition. So therefore, mm -hmm. the Ayurveda, therefore, all of the arms of Raja Yoga, all of these pieces and clean eating is important, especially now. I mean, I started when I was very young and everybody thought, you're nuts, you know, just go eat that iceberg lettuce and, and be quiet. <laughs> um, no, 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 I'm not going to do that. <laughs> and so I really invite everybody to listen carefully mm -hmm. to what Dr. Vant is saying and then 
just go have a little look in your cupboards. There should be dishes in there, not cans. And go to your yes. fridge oh, totally. and see yes. that it's beautifully full of green things and mm -hmm. things that are the things we've been talking about. I think we could talk for a very long time on this mind-body connection. <laughs> Absolutely. And the body, like Ayurveda is saying, the body has its own there is an intelligence at the cellular level so the body is recognizing if you're eating clean foods or if you have clean emotions versus fast food and toxic relationships beautifully said my <laughs> guest today is dr brindu sabanta <laughs> and she has brought us a world of wonderful things from the field of allopathic and alternative medicine and her research Thank you so much for being my guest. Thank you so much for inviting me. So you can Thank learn you. more about her at drvanta.com, D-R-V-A-N-T-A. And that's V for victory, drvanta.com. Get her free gift, take her brain health test. And if you'd like to chat with me because you find yourself in a toxic relationship and that's the piece you need to work on, you can go to transformingrelationship.com. Or if you're ready to talk to me directly, you can go to BeAClient.com. In the meantime, catch my other uh, podcast, Save Your Sanity, Help for Toxic Relationships, and my YouTube channel for F-O-R, Relationship Help. Take good care of yourself. Think deeply about what we've offered you today, and we'll talk soon. Bye-bye. <music>